The surreal tone of Dying Light 2 Stay Human combines a very serious end of days theme with silly characters and mini games that have you smacking zombies off skyscrapers with a cricket bat. It's bizarre, but somehow works extremely well. This zombie smashing action game is a strong post-apocalyptic adventure with top tier parkour movement, an expansive open world, and lots of great characters. What doesn't work so well is how it combines a near lethal assortment of bugs with a story centered around a protagonist so uninteresting that he's all but undead on arrival. Before we dive in, it's important to note that I do not recommend jumping into Dying Light 2 on day one if your tolerance for bugs is low. I was able to play it to completion, but only barely. Leading up to launch, it is absolutely drowning in a sea of debilitating technical issues. Whether it was crashing, all dialogue stopping during cutscenes, all audio being replaced with this terrifying sound, getting locked out of quests, uneven frame rates, and too many others to list here. Many glitches are temporary annoyances or even amusing wonkiness, but others are more dire. One IGN editor playing on PS5 had his entire save file corrupted, leaving him with a never-ending loading screen and locking him out of his save pending an upcoming patch. Those issues are particularly disappointing, since Dying Light 2 can be a lot of fun between them. Sticking largely to the plan laid out by its surprise hit predecessor in 2015, it takes place in an excellent, highly explorable city. The rooftops are home to eccentric survivors who have become masters of parkour, scavenging, and chopping zombie heads off with assorted sporting equipment. By day, the zombie swarms crowd into buildings to hide from the sun, and by night, they pour into the streets in daunting masses. But the real tension comes from managing the terrifying meter that counts down your own transformation into a brainless shambler. Like nearly everyone else, you're infected with the zombie virus, and staying in near constant contact with UV rays is the only thing delaying the inevitable. The ever-present need to recharge that meter, which will deplete in a matter of minutes if you're inside a building away from the light, is an excellent addition that keeps up the pressure on every step of your journey. During the night, you have to be extremely deliberate with everything you do, so you can make it back to a nearby oasis with UV lights to replenish your meter, like a diver with a limited oxygen supply. Do you risk looting every corner of a mission area, or rush through and complete the main objective to mitigate danger? Should you take the time to sneak around to avoid conflict, or would it be easier to press the attack and risk getting stabbed to reach a goal faster? <laughs> Decisions like this layer on top of the action and give you something to think about beyond just splattering the nearest zombies and looting their corpses. The biggest highlight of Dying Light 2 by a mile, though, is its liberating and smooth parkour system, which improves upon the first game's already impressive toolbox. You'll leap from building to building, scale skyscrapers, and even swing around with a grappling hook with intuitive ease. Since the city streets are flooded with the undead by night and not yet dead bandits by day, Sticking to rooftops quickly becomes one of the most intricate and high-stakes games of the floor is lava of all time, and it's consistently entertaining even when you're just running from point A to point B. Combat against humans and zombies alike can also be a lot of fun as you drop kick faces, dodge and parry attacks, and lop off arms, legs, and torsos. <laughs> There isn't much variety to the human enemies, but there are so many great options for finding inventive ways to kill a whole room of bandits or bloodthirsty brain eaters that it's rarely a tedious undertaking. Throwing giant exploding gas tanks at groups of enemies, setting a dozen zombies on fire with a well-placed Molotov cocktail, or just walking up to them one at a time and drop kicking them out of a window are just a few ways I rid myself of unwanted undead. It's still a lot of fun, even when you quickly become overpowered and lose a lot of the difficulty and fear factor, or when you realize the human AI is about as smart as a boot full of mayonnaise. Pull yourself together. You got a visitor. And who's that? Queen of fucking England?
After chasing down story threads for the 80 hours it took me to beat Dying Light 2, it was deflating that the main plot ended up feeling so weak, despite an embarrassment of riches when it comes to great characters. Rosario Dawson's Lawan, for example, is a fantastic anti-hero you get to hang out with a lot as she broods, drinks, and kills people indiscriminately with a crossbow. Ready? Let's go. Then there's the washed up former hero Frank, the charming ladies man Hakan, and many, many more who left me with fun and dramatic moments to remember them by. The real issue is that Dying Light 2 just kind of has you meander from character to character without any cohesive story materializing between them, mostly because of the disappointing character you spend the most time with, Aiden Caldwell. That's you. Shit. Oh, damn it, Aiden. I was actually starting to like you. Aiden is what you'd get if you ordered a cardboard cutout of a generic protagonist on Amazon and got the cheap knockoff version instead. The tale of revenge he's on is confusing, cliche, and borders on nonsensical by the end. Without going into spoilers, the flashbacks to Aiden's mysterious and tragedy-filled backstory sprinkled throughout the campaign left me wondering when the other shoe would drop, but it never did. It's especially irritating because there are so many interesting stories and well-written characters throughout the campaign, but for some reason your own character is one of the dullest people on one of the most humdrum adventures among them. I'm looking for Sophie! <laughs> Sophie! Another disappointment is that most of the major decisions I made had little impact on the overall flow of the story. Despite Dying Light 2 seemingly going out of its way to focus on your choices, supposedly carrying weight. For example, I did everything in my power to piss off one of the city's biggest and most powerful factions, even going so far as to unsubtly assassinate several of their leaders. I expected big time consequences, and yet by the end of the story I still found myself working alongside them, even moments after I'd betrayed them for the third consecutive time. For what it's worth, they did give me a stern talking to, but none of it had a whole lot of impact on where I ended up. Although my actions certainly changed some characters' opinions of me and altered some story quests here and there, I ultimately still did all the same major story missions regardless of my decisions. Likewise, the ending felt like an inevitability, with only minor details changing along the way when I went back to see what might have gone differently. Come outside. Let's talk. Dying Light 2 also features a drop-in co-op mode where up to four players can explore the city together and take on any activity from story missions to parkour minigames to boss fights. It's not only impressive that so much of the campaign can be enjoyed together, but it has just about every feature I could have asked for from a modern co-op game. There's difficulty scaling to account for more people in the action, player-specific loot so you don't have to fight with friends over weapon drops, and crucially, all progress, XP, and story decisions carry across to your save file, whether you're the host or a guest. <laughs> Dying Light 2 Stay Human is another in a long series of big, ambitious games whose potential greatness is visible just beneath a grimy layer of bugs. It could very likely become the stellar zombie survival adventure it's meant to be someday. For now though, it's best added to your backlog unless your irritation with crashes and technical issues is outweighed by eagerness to dance across rooftops with its excellent parkour. Which, when everything works, is an unforgettable way to explore the last city's open world and join in the post-apocalyptic stories of its many weird and distinctive characters. No patch can fix the forgettable main plot or the protagonist I couldn't pick out of a police lineup even after 80 hours in his shoes, but Dying Light 2's streets manage to tell their own stories. For more open world adventures, check out our reviews of Far Cry 6's Control DLC or our review of Pokemon Legends Arceus. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.